stop and give him the floor to cover the waterfront. Roger Stone of thestonezone.com. You notice his The Clinton's War on Women by Skyhorse, a bestseller. We sell it at InfoWarsStore.com. You can get it at stonezone.com or Amazon or bookstores everywhere. Notice this is kind of a blueprint now. Uh, we had Larry Nichols on, who released a lot of this 20-something years ago, saying Stone's the man to talk to. The Inquirer is coming out next week. So we're really seeing the response to the Clinton's dastardly statement, uh, you know, trying to imply to the New York Times that Trump had done something wrong. Those women have said they never said any of this. Just like the hoax of the rape case, it's all bull. But you will see more hoaxes. Mr. Stone, am I right? Alex, uh, first of all, it's great to be back with you. Uh, and uh, as I've said many times on this program, the views expressed are strictly mine. Uh, but uh, I think you're absolutely right that uh, we are at an exciting time in American politics. We are on the cusp of taking our country back. And it has taken someone from outside the realm of politics, from outside the realm of the two-party duopoly, somebody who, in my opinion, is a giant when it comes to communications. I also agree with you that the vice presidential pick is going to be the litmus test as to whether the globalists can co-opt Donald Trump the way, in, to some extent, they co-opted Ronald Reagan. Kind of reminds me of a story that, um, that uh, from the 1980 campaign when uh, Ronald Reagan had clinched the Republican nomination uh, and we were headed out to Greenwich, Connecticut for a campaign event. But before we did the event, Reagan had a private off the record sit down with Henry Kissinger. Now, uh, Kissinger had opposed Reagan's nomination. Kissinger was not a Reagan fan, but more importantly, Reagan was not a fan of detente. Reagan believed that we had to overpower uh, and shut the Soviet Union's war machine down rather than coexist with it. So the men never agreed. They met privately. I was obviously not in the room. It was just uh, Governor Reagan, Dr. Kissinger. Uh, when he emerged from the meeting 45 minutes later and he got back in the car, uh, I said, well, Governor, how was your meeting with Dr. Kissinger? He just shook his head and he said, God, the guy smelled like garlic. It was awful. So uh, wow. I think you have a very analogous situation here. I've known Trump 30 years. His ideas, whether it is NATO or whether it is our fiscal situation or if it is, or it is our ridiculous trade policy, these are our hard-formed personal views that no one is going to change. Not Dr. Kissinger, not the Council on Foreign Relations, not the elites of the Republican Party. So when it comes to the question of the vice presidency, I must tell you, I put my complete and total faith in Donald J. Trump. Uh, you're going to hear names on the short list here that, in my opinion, are probably not really under consideration. Names put there for the point of party unity. Names put there uh, to create uh, a smokescreen so that Mr. Trump can have some suspense at the convention, but I would predict this. The nominee will be a nationalist, not a globalist. The nominee will be somebody who shares Donald Trump's views on a broad cross-section of issues. Now, he has, as you know, thrown out some names and talked about a short list and a vetting process, uh, but at the end of the day, there's only one man on the planet who knows what Trump is going to do, and that's Trump. Uh, this process is not being managed by his campaign manager, Corey Lewandowski. Uh, it is not being managed by the very able lawyer that he's brought in to assist in the vetting, A.B. Culver House, who I know well from the Reagan administration, a good man, a patriot. Uh, but at the end of the day, only one man's going to make this choice, and I put my full faith in Donald Trump. That's exciting. It's also common sense. If he's a nationalist, uh, peace through strength, a patriot, a constitutionalist, and a free marketer, Trump is going to end up picking somebody that's similar to him or almost exactly like him because he doesn't really like to, you know, to compromise on base values. That makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, I, I've heard from some other little birds and things, the same thing that you talked about with me this morning. Nothing secret you told me or anything, but that... Uh, that uh, there's some folks that are excited that there's a very short list and they're all pretty darn good. Yeah, I mean, he look, he met with Senator Corker yesterday. Um, I, I don't know that that has any particular significance. My understanding was that Corker asked for the meeting. Um, he is the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. 
As you know, he was uh, very warm about Donald Trump's foreign policy speech several weeks ago. Uh, we, there's obviously some pressure from some of the party people to take uh, uh, John Kasich uh, on the argument that he would bring you on Ohio. Just my opinion, I think that is unlikely. Never saw any chemistry between he uh, and Donald Trump. Uh, Marco Rubio, in my opinion, is not a is not a finisher in this process. Not the right man either. Uh, there is, uh, of course, some discussion of uh, of a woman, Governor uh, Suzanne Martinez uh, of New Mexico. Also, someone I think many people have overlooked, uh, Shelley Moore Capito from. West Virginia, a very distinguished U.S. Senator, the daughter of former Governor Arch Moore, a nationalist, a fine woman, be an excellent choice. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people, I think, that are being looked at who may not be uh, in the newspapers, but only one man knows. So I, I just want to reassure those in your audience who see some of these globalists be, and have their names tossed around. Uh, I am not I'm not afraid. I think at the end of the day, Donald Trump will make the right choice. All I know is his actions, he's only turning up the heat on the globalists. He's doing exactly what the mainstream media tells him not to. They are acting really scared now. No, I think they're in high panic mode because uh, the multi-million dollar negative TV ads didn't work during the primaries. The, uh, the hatchet job by the New York Times about uh, his behavior with women in the 70s and 80s, in my opinion, just set the standard. Now we have to review... Bill Clinton's attitude and treatment of women in the 70s and 80s. Uh, and that's a, that's an ugly, ugly story. I saw this again with uh, Chris Cuomo and uh, and Michael Cohen uh, on CNN. This is not about expression. Well, Roger Stone, stay there. It's just miraculous. You write this book six months ago and you're Trump's confidant. And now, like your book seems to be the whole attack pattern back at the Clintons. I, wow, it's amazing. Uh, the book's available at InfoWarsStore.com. Roger Stone's our guest. We'll be right back with more Inside Baseball. Roger Stone, the consummate political uh, insider from the Republican Party, the last 15 years exposing the establishment and their crimes in a really valiant way, and 40-plus year friend of Donald Trump, best-selling author. Uh, and we've got a New York Times article here, as Trump and Clinton clash, this is in the front of the paper, two operatives duke it out in their shadows. And you learn a lot from this. Uh, I mean, boy, I tell you, we are inside their heads. They are panicked, as he just said earlier. I want to talk about some of these reportedly fake super PACs out there trying to, uh, you know, glom away support as well. What he expects the Clintons to do next. And since he's with us for the full hour, he said he can do that. We'll take some calls the last 15 minutes for your wild card questions. Quick questions for Roger Stone. 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Roger, this is a short segment, so I'm going to try to uh, get right back to you. Uh, where do you want to start, this New York Times piece or j just the boldness of Trump, the courage of Trump? I mean, I'm not trying to kiss his butt here. He knows. He's a savvy guy. He's in danger. I mean, he is. I've never seen anything like this in modern politics, not bowing. Uh, this guy is a brawler. He is a street fighter. I really like what I'm seeing. He's in a crusade to save the country. Uh, he doesn't need the presidency to validate himself. He doesn't need the presidency to be a success. He's already a massive success. He's probably the best known uh, businessman on the planet. He's built a $10 billion plus personal fortune. So um, he's doing this not for himself, but for his country. He hasn't seen a golf course in months. Uh, he has uh, really worked extremely hard to uh, build what I think is a juggernaut. I think I may have said it on this very program. Stepping in front of the Trump movement is going to be like stepping in front of a moving freight train. Uh, this is this is all coming, and as you correctly point out, it's only June essentially, and the polls are showing him either in a dead heat or slightly behind or slightly ahead of Hillary. That is unthinkable. We've been told for how many months Trump can't win. Trump's the weakest candidate. Trump will get slaughtered by Hillary. Of course, all of that is false. Um, the only thing predictable about Donald Trump is that he's entirely unpredictable and that is what has the clintons flummoxed i know you don't like to talk about yourself but i mean the, the new york times everybody's figured out that you're one of the most influential people in there yes we know trump makes the final decision we've got that but i mean so much of what you say and do we, we end up seeing trump saying it and doing like look for him to come out against the federal reserve does a week later i mean countless times i know he has his own ideas about this criticized the fed on his own before but uh i mean he's obviously listened to you a lot he's reading your book 
uh, and they figured it out. I'm kind of worried about you, my friend. What do you make of this uh, article putting you up against Brock? Well, first of all, as I've said, nobody puts words in Donald Trump's mouth. Um, I'm honored that he has uh, seen my book. Um, uh, I'm honored that he is using some of the themes, but he's very much his own man. Uh, this story was interesting. I, of course, knew David Brock in Washington when he was a conservative, when he wrote some of the groundbreaking early exposés on the corruption of the Clintons in Arkansas. He's a very charming, uh, very intelligent, very dastardly guy uh, who's gone over to the dark side. It's very sad. I presume he's done it for the money. Uh, and the Soros bankroll will be, always be larger than what we have to spend. But I, I think that the Clintons and their operatives like Brock are practicing uh, a strategy of suppression. That's because it worked before. It worked in the 80s. Put the pressure on CBS, NBC. We have that ABC. World Net Daily suit and got thousands of pages of documents from the Clinton Foundation. It was call anybody conspiracy theorist, shut down new media, including the left, the anti-free speech. I mean, we have these people. Yes, the problem is that the, that the toothpaste is out of the tube. No longer do the three networks and a couple major national newspapers have a monopoly on information. So therefore, if CNN doesn't cover it, uh, Infowars.com will. Uh, and you are reaching, as they are, we're probably reaching more people than they are. But you're reaching Drudges, millions of drudges. We're reaching probably five, six million people a week that are American consistently. Tens of millions tune through it. Millions worldwide. But, I mean, it's certainly challenging. I mean, we're just one piece of a larger constellation. Well, but whether it is uh, the Drudge Report or Breitbart or the Daily Caller or Infowars or Town Hall or a dozen other Pandora's sites. Pandora's box is open. That's exactly right. And not only that, but th these brave and courageous women like Juanita Broderick, someone that I admire very much, who chooses her words carefully and has only spoken out when it's important, but she has important things to say. Kathleen Willey groped in the White House by Bill Clinton when she went to him for help. Uh, Paula Jones, uh, who Bill Clinton exposed himself to and demanded oral sex in an Arkansas hotel room. These women were suppressed before. They will not be suppressed now. And there's dozens of more right behind them. Uh, they're going to have their day. They're going to have their say. Now, uh, the Clintons can choose to deny the charges or they can respond to them. Let's uh, stay there, Roger. Your sky's breaking up just a bit. It's been crystal clear so far today. Love that new setup you've got. We'll be right back with Roger Stone in HD video. If you're an InfoWars viewer at InfoWars.com forward slash show or on stations across this country, they're trying to suppress this information. I know you understand that, so please spread it to everybody. They do not want this signal getting out. You are the amplifier, listeners. We are back live, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm your host, Alex Jones. And, of course, we are joined by Roger Stone, and he's going to be here with us uh, until the end of the hour. Then we have Paul Joseph Watson from London taking over. I'm not going to belabor this, but we sell things that everybody needs. Non-GMO, heirloom seeds, the lowest prices, the biggest selection you're going to find anywhere. We've got like 20 top brands now, certified, super high quality, from fruit trees down to tobacco to watermelons to squash to apples. I mean, it's just all there. You name it, we've got it. Great thing to do with your family. Great thing to do, especially if you live in a rural area, but also in the city. Great thing to get the kids involved with. You know, just have them watch TV all day. Uh, we've got water filtration systems, the very best, seven or eight brands that are certified, tested, and cut out the glyphosates, the fluoride, all of it. One of the biggest health things you can do. Plus, it makes the water taste better. We have the best water pitchers. We have the best shower filters, four-stage filters with fast flow, uh, Pro Pure Pro Max. Uh, the Alexa Pures are excellent. Uh, we have the Survival Spring Straws, the Life Straws uh, that are uh, you know good for out in the field. Uh, we have water bottles that do it. Just all the best, highest rated. And then we're one of the biggest sellers of all these products in the world because we have such low prices on them. 10% off with promo code WATER. They're already super low price. Stop drinking the garbage in the tap water or even well water. Most areas is contaminated. And support the broadcast. Get a great deal at the same time. Your kidneys, your bladder will thank you. That stuff causes cancer that's in the water. Just look it up for yourself. The glyphosate especially just grows uh, estrogen-based tumors on record. Breast cancer is up multi-thousand percentage points. They admit it's just growing. It, 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 they're estrogen-based tumors. You need to filter your water, folks. Infowarsstore.com.
X2 is the good halogen. If you don't have it, the bad halogens fill up your glands. You don't operate right. You shut down. It's just horrible. The good halogen blocks those, fills up your thyroid, other glands. It's just been a miracle in my life the last three four years. I've lost so much weight. I'm so much healthier. And X2 is one of the biggest reasons for that. Um, Anthroplex is basically the dry, organic version of Super Male Vitality. It's a little less expensive. We've got it. Super Male and Female are sold out. They all blow you away. I turn into a raging maniac, quite frankly, about taking Anthroplex with Super Mel, but I'm already a type A personality. So just talk to your doctor before you take it. This is all legal and awful stuff, but it's real. It's not placebo. It's not games. It's not jokes. Uh, we're we're going to sell hardcore stuff, and Anthroplex is hardcore. Okay, period. So it's InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com. Sign up for the free newsletter, and you'll get all the books, uh, links, videos, my ebooks, uh, films special reports and a lot of big discount promo codes sent to uh, your email. And as more censorship kicks in, it's more and more important that we be able to contact you. So Infowars.com forward slash newsletter. Get free shipping on orders of $50 or more and 10% off additionally any other discounts when you also sign up for auto ship at Infowarsstore.com or by calling toll free. They can help you as well. Operators are right here in the same building. 888-253-3139. 888 888-253 Two five three three one three nine. They're here in the building until seven o'clock every night. Then it's a answering service we've had for twenty years. They're excellent as well. They can take your orders. Okay, I'm done ranting, but that's how we fund this operation, and we sell products at low prices. You need um, Roger Stone is our guest. Stonezone.com. Uh, he sells the two books: uh, the uh, Bush crime family, and of course uh, the Clinton's war on women. These are now the definitive books. I'm an expert on both areas. The books go together to understand how the world works. You may think you already know all this, but you don't. Top experts have read these and say it takes it to a new level because of Stone's uh, governmental connections and others. It is amazing. Five, a perfect five-star rating uh, at InfoWarsStore.com. Now, continuing uh, with that, it's great to give to friends and family and neighbors. And we have polls out and London Guardian articles, women are turning against them. I've got another article on Infowars.com. Millennials are turning from Clinton and even Sanders to Trump. So people are really sick of the social justice warriors and do what I say or your racist garbage. And I'm telling you, the Trump phenomenon is spectacular and it's only a manifestation of the overall awakening. That's why we don't lose either way. This is exciting. Getting back to Roger Stone, uh, Roger, again, amazing times. Um, I want to get into Brock. I want to get into new attacks. But you've got the floor here for 10 minutes before we go to calls. What else is front and center? What else should we be watching? What's the next attack? You've told us months before what the new attack will be. What do you expect? What do we do? Well, I think, Alex, you just put your finger on it. Uh, I have a granddaughter who uh, is uh, in college now, and I know that she and uh, all of her friends are deeply concerned about the issue of sexual assault and rape on the campuses. I think this is a particularly sensitive issue with millennial uh, women, girls, uh, who many of whom will be voting for the first time. Uh, and I've always thought this was Hillary Clinton's greatest single vulnerability. Now, the mainstream media, Chris Cuomo and CNN and others, would like this discussion to be about marital infidelity or adultery or girlfriends, but it's uh, it's a much more troubling issue, sexual assault and rape. Bill Clinton is a Bill Cosby style sexual predator. But what Hillary has done is even worse because it is Hillary Clinton uh, who has intimidated uh, and bullied uh, and threatened Bill Clinton's victims, either intimidated them so they wouldn't respond to subpoenas, as in the case of Kathleen Willey, or intimidating them so they wouldn't go public with the media. Uh, and that abuse of women, um, I think, is going to be explosive on the campuses. That is the narrative that the Clintons fear. Now, in some cases, for example, the case of Juanita Broderick, Hillary did the intimidation herself, squeezing her hand tight, looking her into her eyes and saying, we appreciate everything you're doing for Bill. In other cases, of course, Hillary would hire heavy-handed private detectives like Jack Palladino uh, or Anthony Pelicano to terrorize these women, kill their pets, threaten their children, smash their windshields, slash their tires, ransack their homes repeatedly. Uh, these are the Gestapo tactics of the Clintons. And all bets are now off because Hillary has chosen to get back into the ring 
rather than ride off into the sunset with their stolen money uh, and their and their fame and their prominence, their insatiable desire for power and money has gotten the best of them. And therefore, I think it's all back on the table. Vince Foster, Travelgate, uh, the selling of pardons to the international financier, Mark Rich, uh, the way the Clintons stole the furniture and the silver when they left the White House. What's old new? The communist Chinese generals, the missile secrets. Uh, selling our military secrets to the Chinese. Chinese funny money. It's all back on the table. Uh, I think because none of these things came up eight years ago within the context of the Democratic primaries, Perhaps Hillary thought the statute of limitations had run, or perhaps she thought that the mainstream media would never cover these things. Well, Donald Trump understands all of this, uh, and in his own time frame, uh, and based on his own judgment, he is going to expose the Clintons from top to bottom. Well, you said this a year ago to me, and I, I, I tentatively believed you, uh, but I had to wait and see. It's all come true, and I just am so glad I've been in supporting Trump, very, very proud of the fact that he's for real, and I'm just on the edge of my seat, quite frankly. This is so epic and so amazing. Uh, speaking of censorship Gestapo tactics, just six months ago, we, we were talking about the censorship increasing on Facebook. We were getting notices from them. They, the media would just say, you're a conspiracy theorist, even though we had the notices telling us we were suspended and things. Drudge picked it up. The, 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 the new independent, true liberal media, that just means freedom, uh, you know, they've stole the language, folks. We, we we hammered it. Now there's a Senate investigation. They've had to admit they did it. They blamed it on low-level employees. Their own whistleblowers say, no, it's from the top. Obviously, it's from the top. And Glenn Beck, I don't want to spend time on him, but every time I talk about it, it's all over the news. So I'm glad to be able to you know, at least say, this is the archetype of a Benedict Arnold, how he's uncloaked running to Zuckerberg. He came out and said, there is no censorship. Uh, they're not doing anything wrong. Conservatives are dumb and don't know how to use Facebook. While Facebook is admitting they've done it, that is unprecedented. Are they blackmailing him, or, or uh, what is his problem? Doesn't he even get the optics? I mean, even a sociopath wouldn't act like this. He's self-immolating, or, or is that wrong? Well, I've had the exact same experience that you have, Alex. Uh, Facebook has uh, systematically closed down some of my sites when I try to disseminate the truth about Bill Hillary and Chelsea Clinton, uh, well, uh, who I like to refer to as the grifters. Uh, so I've had the exact same experience, and I think it is chilling. Look, I've always had a good relationship with Glenn Beck, and he has been uh, generous in his discussion of my books. So I don't know what's happened to him. He seemed to go off the edge uh, when Donald Trump took off as a candidate. Uh, I, I figured that perhaps he'd sold his soul to Ted Cruz and his backers financially because I'm not sure his communications model at The Blaze is working the way, say, InfoWars works or some of the other successful right-of-center operations. Uh, but I'll tell you what does I do want to hit today because it's important, and that is uh, I want to warn all of your viewers and listeners about something called Great America Pack. Oh, you talked about this, and Trump's tweeted about it, and it's, he said this isn't me, and they don't. I'm glad you raised that because World Net Daily has exposed that, right, Dr. Corsi? There's, there's a major story on World Net Daily today by the great Jerry Corsi. Uh, it's been exposed uh, in the New York Times uh, in a piece by Maggie Haberman. Uh, Boone Pickens, the uh, Texas uh, oil billionaire, recently withdrew for a fun, from a fundraiser. This fellow, Ed Rollins, who wears this Reagan credential on his sleeve, works by day at Teneo. Teneo is the Clinton-connected lobbying firm run by Bill Clinton's former running buddy and chief of staff, Doug Band. Yeah. Bill Clinton has made millions out of Teneo. So I think that this is a, a I think Rollins is a saboteur. There was a fellow named Dean on Fox Business News this morning. He's their new finance chairman. He neglected to tell us that as Ben Carson's finance chairman, he spent $4.2 million to raise $5.5 million. Wow. Folks, if you want to help Donald Trump and you want to give, go to the official Trump for President website. Even though he is not soliciting funds, there is a link there where you can contribute voluntarily. That's where you should put your money. Roger Stone, let me raise this here because, look, I know he said in the primary, I'm not going to take big money. I get all that, but I want to beat Hillary 
I mean, she's going to raise billions. As long as he says, I'm going to follow the Constitution, your money means nothing, it means you're supporting me, that's what it should be. Hey, I, I'm going to follow the Constitution. If you like that, give me money. And then I don't care if he has PACs that gets money. I really think he's at a disadvantage. I know he said he wouldn't do it early on, but now we're in the general election. I, I mean, am I wrong to say he needs to go ahead and spread his wings and try to get as much money as possible? Hey, look, Alex, he would be a fool to unilaterally disarm. Money is still the mother's milk of, of American politics. It's a weapon. I needed to operate. It'd be crazy if I didn't do that. Exactly. Plus, I think he's smart enough to know that the the Wall Street, K Street types are going to have their CYA money. Why shouldn't he take it? The point is, I've said here before, you can't buy Donald Trump, not for a dollar, not for a million dollars, not for a hundred million dollars. He's extremely stubborn. That's a good thing when it comes he's to his own. He's, he's his own man. But I would urge people who want to help Trump there is one legitimate uh, uh, pack out there, the uh, the Committee for American Sovereignty. I, I know those folks. They're honest, hardworking people. They're not going to steal the money in overhead uh, or in, in rich consultant fees. But this Great America pack run by Ed Rollins is a scam. It's a fraud. Is uh, Benton still sneaking around over there? Give the money directly to Trump. That's the best thing to do. Sure. I mean, is Benton still sneaking around in there? Well, he supposedly uh, now has disassociated himself. You refer to Jesse Benton, <clears throat> who sabotaged two uh, Paul campaigns, the Ron Paul oh, There was no doubt. I watched it happen and held my tongue because I don't know. I mean, it was bad. Very, very sad. But since he was convicted of bribery uh, in connection with the Ron Paul campaign uh, only weeks ago, he seems to have dropped from sight. Uh, and they say he is no longer associated with Great America PAC. Just uh, the fact that a convicted felon was there a week ago should be a concern for donors. All right. Uh, other, because I want to get to some calls here. They'll bring in some good wild card questions. I want to play this short clip, one of the new mini ads, because Americans' attention spans out of a goldfish now. Uh, but, but uh, you know, exposing uh, what happened with the rape cases. Uh, I just love what Trump's doing. Here it is. I was very nervous. No woman should be subjected to it. But it you, was an assault. He starts to uh, lie on my top of it. And I try to pull away from him. <laughs> Here we go again. Trump, make America great again. Make America free again is my slogan. Uh, I want to get some calls. Amazing points here. Other points we should know about, other attacks. What keeps you up at night with concern? I know you're just too busy charging ahead, Roger Stone, but what else? Uh, I'm not up at night with concern. I'm up at night because I'm excited. This is, uh, this is uh, going to be a winning campaign. Uh, and I'm just uh, grateful to stand outside the tent and uh, uh, and uh, do my own thing. Uh, I do think. Uh, did, did you talk to the next president of the United States this morning? Uh, I, I did, in fact, uh, call to congratulate him uh, on uh, on this ad, which I think is spectacular. But beyond that, as you know, uh, our conversations are, are proprietary and they're personal. Uh, Donald Trump is not scripted by anybody. Certainly, not I know by that. Me. I know that. But I tell you, you got to watch out because they figured out that uh, you're definitely influential in there. <laughs> Trump, can, Trump can read. Good God. The, the, it's not as if the Clinton's record is unknown. All this information is out there. You've presented it for years, I've had, as have others. Let me ask you a question because I've, yeah, I've been out to dinner with you and stuff. You're, you're in good shape, really good shape for your age. You, you, you send me emails and text messages at 2 a.m., 7 a.m., 6 a.m. I, mean, I, I mean, I sleep six, seven hours. I got a lot of energy. You got so much energy. I mean, you are. I mean, I, I just hope everybody knows how hard Roger Stone's working. Seven days a week, you are you are doing stuff, man. Well, it's a combination of exercise uh, in eating right, and then frankly, natural supplements like uh, like Brain Force. Uh, look, I, I know they try to make us kooks because we believe that herbs and supplements can actually affect your physical and mental performance, but they do. Brain Force is a great product, and it works. Well, sure, they said people were kooks. Mental clarity. So, uh, yeah, I I, uh, I believe in alternative medicine. I see an acupuncturist once a week for balance. Uh, acupuncture has been around for 2,000 years. Western medicine has been around for roughly 200 years. Uh, but, uh, look, the adrenaline is flowing. Uh, as George C. Scott said when he was playing a General Patton in a great line, he said, God, I love war. <laughs> this is a war. A war for the future of the United States of America. Yeah, it's a good war. It's an info war. They want to make it physical and shut our free speech up. I'm skipping the break because here's the deal. I may even do a whole show of three hours of dead air soon, four hours, to, to protest the censorship and Facebook 
and all the things that are coming out. So separate from Beck, though, isn't it amazing that Facebook, I mean, we know they do this in third world countries. They help, you know, the dictators and the communists. But to catch Zuckerberg, and here you are saying they, you know, they blacked you out. They erased your sites. You know, they blocked your sites on the Clinton's war on women. I know that was one of them they took down. And we, and we just kind of like, yeah, that's what they do. This is outrageous. These people are authoritarians. Well, look, I think they regret ever letting the Internet go forward. Life was so much easier for the establishment when they had three uh, television networks and a couple national news. Senator newspapers. Rockefeller said that before he left office, remember? Yes, indeed. Uh, it, it, for example, if the Kennedy assassination were to happen today, there would have been so many cell phone cameras on the, on the uh, Dealey Plaza, it would be impossible to suppress the truth. But since you had one cameraman, uh, and I think we both agree that his film was alt later altered. Well, they admit it. Uh, uh, and they do admit it. Um, it. It would no longer be possible. The truth can no longer be suppressed. That's why they keep talking about regulating the Internet. They don't want to regulate the Internet. They want to shut it down because patriots and everyone else can now communicate with each other. And this is the famous fight when Drudge was told last year by the Supreme Court Justice at a meeting, he said, they're coming after everybody next year. They're coming after us. Now they've whacked Scalia, there's no doubt. They are moving. This is a war, folks. This is it. And I think they're failing. I think because Trump arising during this time is such a powerful force with the presumptive nominee now, basically like Godzilla in front of us as our, as our leader, and we're all turbocharging. It gives us all cover. We are routing these bastards. Well, and just, uh, look, I, I've met a lot of tough guys in my day. I've never met anybody tougher than Donald Trump. The guy is, uh, uh, he's courageous, he's bold, he knows he's taking his life in his hands when he goes out there, but he's decided that this is something he must do. I pray for him every day, I pray for his safety. And by the way, he uh, looks totally energized, doesn't he? I know you won't tell me the well, private stuff, I know he is energized, but I mean, he's really energized. He's loving this. Well, and he's doing a, he's doing a West Coast swing here of states uh, where, whose primaries really no longer matter but because he wants to spread the word and show the flag. Uh, and he's going to campaign He's a fighter. California. He jumps out in front of all the communists when they block the road, just marches right in front of them and, like, jumps down five-foot culverts. I just love it. Yeah, no, look, he's a, he's a leader. It's time for America to have a leader. Uh, look, I, I thought Ronald Reagan was the one of the greatest presidents in my lifetime, and I was honored to have a small role in his election. But this election, this election is actually more important. It's epic. It's for all the marbles. This is the epic showdown between the globalists who are for the new world order and those who believe in the Constitution as envisioned by the founding fathers. Not a living document, not something subject to change, meant exactly as it was written at the time. Incredible. I want to go to phone calls. We've only got about seven minutes left. Each quick questions from Carol and Joe and Bill and Tom and Elijah and others. I didn't plug this hour. I skipped breaks. I'm out of control. Buy the products at InfoWarsStore.com. Get the products. I guess I'll play a little bit earlier, but the point is, sign up for the newsletter. We need your support. Spread the word. You see it now. They're censoring. They're attacking because we're like high noon to vampires, folks. They hate it. Support Roger Stone. Get his books. It's a war for your future. We love freedom. We love guns. We love private property. We love family. We love Americana, like Donald Trump. We're not perfect, but we just we, we, we don't have it out for the country. And they got us up off the bench, and we're ready to kick butt here. We've come here to kick butt and chew bubble gum. We're out of bubble gum, to quote another great patriot, Rowdy Piper. Uh, let's talk to Carol in Pennsylvania. You're on the air with Roger Stone. Go ahead. Hi, Ellie. Hi, Mr. Stone. How are you today? Good, thank you. Excellent. Um, before I, I, I ask my question, I've got to say, brain force is the bomb. I, I, I've got to say it. I just started thank you. We went out and found out what the best, the safest nootropics are and made it super strong and inexpensive because I want to dominate the market. It's a no-brainer. It's a great nootropic. Don't take too many, though. <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's, it's like the first, I'm telling you, in, in, a half, in a half hour, I was like flat getting it on all eight, let me tell you. I Absolutely. Like, it's, just, it, it's terrific. Um, but here's my question. Now, um, Mr. Stone, if it were up to you, who do you think would be the best VP fit for uh, Mr. Trump? Personally, I think that you or Jesse Ventura or Alex, you know, I think. Well, he, uh, a little bird told me who he might like, but we can't say that on air today. I mean, I mean, uh, he can talk about who the front runners are. I mean, who knows? Who would be the good uh, VP? Uh, you know who I really like? A dark horse whose name you don't hear very much is uh, Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama. Uh, I've known Jeff Sessions back to our, to our days in the Young Republicans. Uh, completely understands the immigration issue better than any other member of the U.S. Senate has been a bold leader on that issue, 
very well thought of in the Congress, uh, early, early, early supporter of Donald Trump. Uh, so that would be my emotional favorite now. Oh, Trump, Senator Sessions, I'll have to mark that down. Trump may have to, you know, he may have to move beyond the Trump camp for a running mate. But if I were Trump and I were making this decision, he would certainly be one that I would have on my list. There you go, ma'am. You heard it here first, Carol. Good question. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Bill in Indiana. You're on the air with Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. Yeah, uh, Janitor, uh, Senator Jeff Sessions said that Trump's uh, foreign policy is similar to Henry Kissinger. What do you think about that? Uh, I didn't Trump say that. He said Trump, uh, he said that Hillary's coming after your guns and Trump's a nationalist. Well, where did he say that, where did Senator Sessions say that his, his Trump's uh, policy is like Kissinger's? Trump's, Trump's policy is, is, uh, is very opposite, like 150 degrees different, right, uh, Roger? I, I've never heard him say that. Look, uh, Kissinger is discredited. Reagan proved that everything Kissinger and my mentor Nixon were trying to do was wrong. Detente, the idea that we could not beat the Soviets, it was impossible. Therefore, we had to give up ground and coexist. Reagan turned that on its ear. So to a certain extent, although Henry Kissinger is in his 90s and he falls asleep in the middle of most meetings, uh, his entire foreign policy has been discredited. It's a new day. Trump has his own foreign policy. Sure, sure. And just to be fair to the caller, I did look it up. Sessions said something like that on Fox News. We put the article up on screen. I don't, I don't know what Sessions meant by that, uh, but I like Sessions. Uh, I do, too. He's, he's a great patriot. Let's jam in a few more here. Joe in New Jersey, you're on the air with our guest, Roger Stone. Hi, Alex. How you doing? Good. Thank you. Good. Um, my question is, what do you think about Hillary dropping out uh, health reasons? Yeah, could she be indicted? Could she? Exactly. I mean, uh, they've got other folks in the wings. And then Joe Biden... And Joe Biden parachuting in. Good question, Roger. Certainly a possibility. Uh, look, we're all on pins and needles waiting to see what the FBI director is going to say. I, I think it is highly unlikely that the Obama administration will prosecute Hillary Clinton. As much as I think Obama and Hillary do not like each other, I think they're in a Mexican standoff because uh, they don't want to talk about what really happened in Benghazi and when the president really learned that our mission was under siege. They don't want to talk about the role of Valerie Jarrett and who actually made the decision to stand down. Uh, I've said before on this program and elsewhere that I believe if the FBI director, who's a good man and, an, and a real law enforcement guy, makes a, a recommendation for indictment, that Barack Obama will pardon Hillary Clinton, uh, claiming that these were highly technical violations and there was no intent. Well, I know you've got to go. You've been gracious to give us an hour. 70-second break. There's one question I forgot. I'll take two minutes, and I'll tell you the question now and come back. Thank you, Roger. I, I was on the treadmill this morning or the, the elliptical, and it was Fox News playing clips of you on, talking about helping the women that were raped, you know, go on a tour. They were implying that you guys had paid them off to make up lies. I wanted to respond to that because it's obviously bull. They settled the cases before he ever said this. They're persecuting these women. Obviously, we need to put them on the road to expose the rape, and there's no shame in helping women who were raped. We'll be back. The past people thought it was kind of hokey to say we were in a war. Now you see we're in a war. This is real. Humanity's awakening. A few minutes left with Roger Stone and then Paul Watson from London all suited up, coming out of the bullpen. He's got a lot to cover. He had like six stories last he had last night of the day, like I think five at one time on Drudge. Never seen that. We've had trifecta top three before, but whoa, biggest links on the web. Infowars and our reporters are kicking butt. Hawaii considers gun owner registry for firearm confiscations, Kit Daniels. So much new breaking news on Infowars.com with our great reporters. Finishing up, I don't know if you saw it. I was working out for like an hour and a half this morning, and I had Fox News, CNN on, you name it. And it was on Fox News, and then I, I got off. It was on CNN. I heard it on the local radio like, well, yes, uh, Roger Stone was on Alex Jones, and you know, he said we should raise money to try to help these rape victims go on a world tour. Well, and the next like, you, you, like, like just suddenly you just paid these women. They hadn't settled. They hadn't gone public. You know, it's like saying Bill, like, like you know, we paid women to lie about Bill Cosby or something. They just spin anything. You said that publicly, but they were acting like they dredged up some murder confession. Uh, that shows how scared. I don't, I don't know if you've seen this, but it's now in a Clinton ad. They're running a clip of you. Yeah, uh, look, I'm flattered. Uh, this is really simple. Every one of these women made their public accusations many, many years before I met or contacted any of them. Now, it was true that Kathleen Willey, who I admire enormously as a very brave and courageous woman who wrote a great book about her experience, 
was facing mortgage foreclosure. And they death threat her and they kill her animals and ask, where are your animals, right. and laugh at her. She's been on. I mean, this she is woman's was, under attack. She was facing a foreclosure of her home where she's lived for almost 30 years. Uh, I, I, along with others, did set up a GoFundMe account to raise money to try to pay off her mortgage. At one time, I was told that Donald Trump made an online contribution to the fund. That would have been great. In retrospect, he did not. Didn't matter. I think the problem has been solved because many, many patriots who watch this show uh, responded. Uh, Good and, job. Uh, are, and her situation is resolved. Good job, but viewers. she hasn't been paid anything to say, to lie, not a dollar. And, and again, repeat that. Decades before you ever wrote a book about this, this is on record that the guy's a, a predator. Yeah, so the idea that, that any woman has been paid to bear false witness against the Clintons is absurd. Look, Soros pays David Brock, who knows, a million dollars, and he makes up all kinds of lies. He pays him four million a year to the overall scumbag organization. Yeah, you won't see that on CNN, though. Well, exactly. I mean, you're open about it. You're like, you know, uh, he called, hey, can you help this lady? They're about to take her house. And we're like, she's yeah, friend, my listeners, I mean. Woman, she needed help. Uh, and I'm proud to she be. She didn't uh, ask for money when I had her on 20 years ago. She's never asked for money. The she point is, I, I exposed the Clintons at my own risk because they're, they're, they're thugs. They're so dirty. I mean, I think we're getting close to the fall of the Clintons. What do you think? Uh, I don't think there's any question because their their tactics are now going to be completely exposed. These are people who have had witnesses beaten, who have had people's homes broken into, who have threatened people, who have used the IRS to audit all of these women. Jones, Broderick, Willie, they all get IRS audits. These are not women of enormous means. How coincidental. By the way, wasn't using the IRS against your political enemies one of the counts of impeachment against Russia? Oh, yeah. They had an IRS enforcer brag on C-SPAN that they were going to come after conservatives. These people are so arrogant, they don't even know what they're doing is illegal. Roger Stone, StoneZone.com, the Clintons war on women, available at StoneZone.com. We have it at InfoWarsStore.com. Amazing. Thank you for the full hour, uh, and it's just so great to be part of history and, and trying to restore this great republic. Thank you, sir. Alex, I'm always pleased and honored to be here, and I'll see you soon. Thank you, man. I feel good being part of this, folks, and great job the listeners. Helping that lady not have her house foreclosed. Great job standing up for a woman, you know, attacked and the rest of it. I tell you, just the greatest audience ever. You guys bring tears to my eyes. Every man, woman, and child, every race, color, and creed, you're amazing. Now get ready. Paul Watson is coming on. He's loaded for bear from London, England. Strap yourselves in. Get ready.